you changed the inner dialogue that you were saying to yourself. Mm. Can you tell us how you were like, I was so stressed out and telling my body, like you're fat, you're unhealthy, right? That stress level. And then as soon as you change your inner dialogue, can you tell us what happened? Yeah. It's like having self-discipline to take the time to add in a positive thought after the negative one comes in because we can't stop the thoughts. Those automatic patterns are going to be forever wired until we start to change the pathways and learn how to connect, like literally on a neurological level, how to make different connections happen. And that happens when we stop self-sabotaging habits like restricting the next day after we binge or um, completely like going into hiding mode after we share a super vulnerable story, like allowing then the next step to be like, oh my God, I'm scared shitless. This really is vulnerable for me. And I feel like you're, I'm going to be judged and I'm in a pa- space of judgment, like literally allowing ourselves to voice and acknowledge no matter where we're at. Um, I think too, like part of being set free was stopping other habits like body checking and like literally even still I'll wake up and like look at my belly. I sleep naked. So I'll like wake up, look at myself and it's almost like you're teaching yourself how you look is a measure of like how you're going to feel for the day. And if you're skinnier, you're worth more. And if you're more bloated or you feel fatter or you feel ashamed of the things you ate, blah, 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 too much drinking, too much sugar, too late at night, whatever you've registered in your brain is like bad and good. When we start to create um, an attached judgment to those things and like security in whether or not we're proud of ourselves if we didn't eat or we did or whatever, Mm -hmm. just like, stopping all of that and being like out loud, like stop Vanessa, stop doing this to yourself and pull your sweatshirt, like put a sweatshirt on, stop body checking. If you know, it's going to be only bad thoughts, then don't look at yourself in the mirror for now. Like just look at your face and look in your eyes and be like, I am beautiful. And even if you don't believe it, just say it to yourself and let that voice of spirit start to come through because it will have those automatic thoughts of love And then you'll start to notice the shift slowly but surely. Like every time you go to the bathroom and you look in the mirror and you're about to check and you catch yourself for a brief moment, like, do I want to look at myself right now and tell myself these thoughts? No, I don't really want to feel like shit about myself today. I don't really want to control my weight. I don't want to step on the scale again. Like I don't have the energy for this anymore. Mm -hmm. And eventually you just decide like you're not going to do it. And the same way with like, how I was struggling with substance use. I went cold turkey for the month of October and (laughs) failed a little bit towards the end. I was like, fuck this. Like, it's Halloween. There was a birthday party and I was like, this restriction, again, like I had to decide, is the restriction and the hard and fast rules that I set on myself healthier for me than um, deciding to choose something based on how I feel in the moment. And there's like... Uh, it's such a a duality of these things needing to work together because if we always made decisions based on how we feel, we'd probably never get any of the hard work done. We'd be like, well, I'm feeling this way today, so I'm just going to whatever. I lean more towards that way because I'm a more like heart-centered, feely type of person. So I need more of that discipline of like, well, I feel this way, but I committed to a commitment. Like I told myself this when I was in a clear, like spiritually connected space So this is really like what I know my highest self wants for me and I can allow forgiveness and some room of gray in between. So now I'm not a hundred percent sober and like that restriction was good for me to see like, oh, I can actually take the time to feel if I want like proving myself that willpower and that um, determination. I have that within me Mm -hmm. and at the same time, like, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be this pure clairvoyant angel on the planet for everyone else. Like I can still enjoy and indulge and numb out and it's okay. And that surrender and that acceptance around it is really like what's setting me the most free and allowing these patterns to not take over, whether it's like wanting to smoke one night and then allowing myself the discipline to be like, no, Vanessa, you get to go to sleep without it tonight because you're going to dream more clearly. You're going to like, that's what I look forward to when I don't use substance is like, I'm going to be so clear and connected to my spirit. Like there is so much more information that's going to unfold in front of me. 
And if I don't, like if I go to bed drunk and I know on the one hand, alcohol like inhibits my REM cycle and blah, 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 blah. I could get down on myself about that. Or I could be like, sick, I enjoyed the night and look forward to connecting with my angels tomorrow. Like whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Forgiving ourselves, allowing, and just taking all of that resistance off of ourselves because it goes from like pushing this boulder uphill um Mm -hmm. struggling our whole lives of like i'm just need to get there i just need to get it up the hill to like this light bouncy ball just like rolling it up the hill and you're like here we go like i'm still going uphill but there's a completely different energy behind it 